Hi and welcome back to part 5, and in this part we'll be finally taking, out, taking on our first gym leader. In this case it's Sillen, I, I think that's how you pronounce his name. And that's uh, that's actually an issue I sort of have with Pokemon, and it's my issue. It's just that I'm not sure how to pronounce half these Pokemon, unless I heard it in the anime. For example the Pokemon Melotic, it's it's pronounced Milotic in the anime, but I've when I first saw it, I thought, oh, that's Milotic. Like, Milotic or whatever. And it, this is this is a great game show. Let's see what's behind curtain number one. An angry trainer. Oh, joy. But, uh, no, this, this gym, as you can see, it's, it's a grass gym, a fire gym, and a water gym all rolled into one. Now, granted, which gym it will be depends on your starter Pokemon. For example, I pick Grass, so this uh, will now be a Fire Gym, which uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy about, yeah. Part of me thinks this is kind of cheap, where the Gym Leader is one that's against yours. Like the guy will ask you what Pokemon you picked and he'll pick one that's effective against yours. But on the other hand, they do give you the elemental monkey, Panpaw, Pansage, or Pansia, so I can't really complain. And it's it's a good way of teaching newcomers about the types, the advantage, advantages and the weaknesses. And for me, that's the best way to do a tutorial. You learn by doing, you know. They don't just tell you, oh, you should use water against fire. They sort of show you in the gameplay. Now at this point I have a few iron berries on me. Not really a big berry user, but since I have them on me, I'm thought, you know, I thought I'll hand them out like candies. Or iron berry. Yeah, I'm thinking about the berries you can get in this uh, series, and there, and there are some like raspberry, or banana berry, I think, or <laughs> or strawberry, or whatever. But anyway, I'll just go for my Pokemon here. Now, the gym leader, or at least the one I'll be facing, will be Chili, and he'll send out a normal type and a fire type. So what I'm going to do is obviously keep Jason Gordon Levitt in the back, but uh, I'll send out Kumabatch first to deal with his Lillipup. And I do like how all these characters are named, Sillen. Cress and Chili, you know, all they all say like an element, but they also mean uh, <laughs> an, uh, something to do with cooking as well. It's punnerific, it's puntastic, and rather witty, if you ask me. Now here's a uh, Sillen. Haven't watched the anime, but I think he's a, a bigger character there. I think he's one of the the, the supporting members or, or whatever. Uh, like I said, I watched the anime when it first started, but I stopped when I realised it wasn't really going to change. But uh, anyway, I, something about the gyms in this game is that they all double up as something else. Well, I think with the exception of one of them. But anyway, what I mean is, like, this is a gym, but it's also a restaurant. And another gym will be a gallery. Another gym will be an airport. Another gym will be... A mine, and it just adds personality to the gyms, makes them unique, makes them memorable. In fact, I think out of all the generations, I think this this game has the best gyms. So he sends out his Lillipop, and I start off with Leah to lower his defenses. And at this point, I'm thinking, is it worth? doing the wrap move, because that will wear down his his health a little by bit. Now the move he uses there is work up and that raises your special attack and attack. Which is really which is actually if you know how to use it, it is quite good. In fact I would say uh, something I've gotten into in this gen, like I've said, is stat raising moves. So something like work up will be good. You know, you, you use it at a beginning at the beginning of a battle and then your attacks from then on will, will be will obviously do more damage. Although, to anyone who knows about Sniffy, he has his own sort of moves which raises his stats, and those are really useful. 
In fact, those kind of moves have really helped me get through the Elite Four. But uh, but honestly, I think that's one of the reasons why uh, Snivy is one is one of people's favourite uh, starters, or at least he's like the favourite of Gen Five. But anyway, I picked him because I like his design. I like it, the sort of green. Green's my favourite colour. I like the yellow as well. That works well. And also, I like the sort of regal Pokémon. I like Pokémon that look, look like I don't want to use the word legendary, but, but they look regal. They look sophisticated. They look mystical. I'm not sure if those are the right words, but uh, essentially, if you know Superior's, well, Sniffy's final form, Superior, then you know that that's the kind of Pokémon I like. You know, Pokémon that look, also look mean, but also look good. And Rap is turning out to be quite useful. Now, something I've just noticed about the music, I mean, I'll just point out, is that whenever your Pokemon's health goes red, it doesn't just beep, you know, beep, 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 like it did in all the previous generations. It actually changes the music. And I'll um, just, you know, thank the Pokemon God Arceus, they finally did that. Because that beeping, when you get low health, can be quite annoying, I can tell you. And it just, it's just a better way of doing it, so it's just a matter of presentation. And with Lilith out of the way, he will send out his pants here. But uh, you don't really have to worry about that if you picked up the uh, pan pool, or whatever your equivalent is. Now honestly, I think I use pan pool as a bit of a crutch here, because I haven't I don't think, in all, the, in all my times I've played this game, I don't think I've not picked up one of these elemental monkeys. I think I've always used them. I guess it would be possible to beat the gym leader without, them, without one of them, but, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I might as well, you know, it, Panpour is a good Pokemon to use, so I might as well use it. Oh, this is awesome. I love the music, the change. Because this, this is like a gym battle. It should feel epic. It should feel special. Like you're achieving something, and you got this wonderful music kicks in when, when the trainers, when the gym leader's down to his last Pokémon. Now, granted, I maybe I should have did a bit of grinding because his uh, Panzer is actually quite above mine, but fortunately, Water is on my side. And just, just to talk about the music, this you know this game's on the DS, and the other Pokemon game that was on the DS was a uh, Platinum. And Platinum's music, it still sounded very electronic. You know this one, you know the music in this gen sounds a lot better. It sounds more organic, I guess would be the word. Which is another reason why I, I just like this generation. Ooh, looks like chili. Got served. Badomtish. Oh, he got three stats on his speed. And like in previous generations, we do get a handy badge and a useful TM. In this case, it's work up, obviously. Nice. And something about the the uh, badges in this uh, generation is that they all have like this sort of gold tint on them, which I like. Work up. Now I think I try this move out a couple of times, but it doesn't really become a, a staple of mine. Oh. And something else I really like about this generation, you can reuse TMs infinitely. That's right, you don't have to keep buying the same one or finding the same one. You can use it again and again. Which which I think is something uh, the, the, the Pokemon fanbase has really been wanting. You can see her work up. 
It's type power accuracy. Doesn't really matter because it's a really it's a status move. No teacher to Jason Gordon Gordon Levitt here. Because I think yeah, it might come in useful later. Uh, particularly because after playing Pokemon as it's advanced, something something I've learned is that you should always give your Pokemon at least one status move. Because when you're fighting, there might be an occasion where you can't attack. Or you don't want to attack, like they're using Boyd. Or something. And you can and you could just use that turn to build yourself up with a stat move. And anyway, this character's here to introduce a game mechanic to us. But it it doesn't really become applicable here because it's it's more of a multiplayer aspect. Something to do with the Wi-Fi of the DS. So granted I you know, you know I can't even try it out in this LP if I wanted to. Now something I find odd here is that she mentions she likes to collect save states from other trainers. Which kind of breaks the fourth wall quite significantly. But uh, besides that, we do get a HM cut. You can, you can uh, cut down trees with it. Now, something, something this generation handles well, again, I keep praising this generation, and it, that's because it does a lot of things right. But anyway, one thing it really does right is the HMs, because it doesn't really force them on you too much. I think there's like five in the main game, there are a few more, but it's not like you have to get a Pokemon and teach it Surf, Waterfall and Dive and have that Pokemon with you through, throughout the entire game. Really, there's just a couple you want to keep regular like Strength, Surf and Fly. The rest sort of come and go. On, on a, uh, honestly, I played Gen 1 first and that's something I still appreciate about Gen 1. It only had five HMs. The other Gens after that have like eight. We don't need eight because they t take up slots on your Pokemon's move set. <sighs> but again, that's another improvement this game made. Anyway, I do teach Tim Curry cuts because at this point it is a good move in general. 50 power, nice. About HMs, now the, the usual thing to do is capture a Pokemon that you use just for HMs, like H HM slaves, they call it. And I think that's that's obviously the better way to deal with it, but honestly, I'd rather keep my own six Pokemon I want to use on my party at all times, rather than carry carry around a HM slave. But that's for another time. Thanks for watching.